Now sometimes when we do a division, our value doesn't go in exactly, but leaves a remainder. And here's an example that does just that. So we'll show you how it works. We have x minus 2 in the usual way to be divided into the polynomial x cubed plus 2x squared. And then you'll notice, by the way, in this example, we haven't got an x term. So just write plus 0x. So remember, any terms that are missing, just fill them in with a 0 for whatever that term is. And then we have the constant minus 3. Dividing in in the usual way, what do you multiply x by to get x cubed? That's going to be x squared. x squared times x minus 2 gives x cubed minus 2x squared. Subtract to find the remainder. 2x squared minus minus 2x squared is 4x squared. Bring down the next term, which in this case is 0x. We'll just bring that down. Okay, you don't have to write the arrows in, I'm just doing that just to remind you. So we have plus 0x. What do we multiply x minus 2 by now to get 4x squared? That's 4x, so we have 4x. Multiply the 4x with the x minus 2. 4x times x, 4x squared. 4x times the minus 2, minus 8x. Subtract to find the remainder. Nothing here. 0x minus minus 8x is 8x. Bring down the minus 3 now. OK. So put the minus 3 there. What do we multiply the x by to give 8x? And that's going to be plus 8. So we have 8x minus 8 twos, which are 16. Subtract to find the remainder. Now this is the point where you'll notice that the 8x minus 16 isn't the same as the 8x minus 3. So what we have now is minus 3 minus minus 16, which ends up being 13. So in this particular question, we have a remainder of 13. So if anyone asks us to find the remainder, then the remainder equals 13. There is another way that we could work out the remainders without going to the efforts of division, but I'll talk to you about that in a later tutorial called the Remainder Theorem.